So I'm not actually in Washington DC anymore, but my family does live in the Washington DC area and I was down there for the Christmas holidays for a little bit over a week. I am back in New York City and as we approach 2023, I wanted to look back at 2022 and take you through my favorite photos of the year. These are mostly New York City photographs. Um, it's a lot of street photography, there's some travel photography, but primarily this is New York City photography. You know, And because I am primarily a street photographer for the purposes of this YouTube channel. Yes, I, I do some fashion photography and some portrait work sort of professionally um, as a separate income stream, but for the purposes of this channel, what I really sort of do as a, a personal passion is street photography and sort of pair that with travel photography. So I wanted to spend some time looking back at the year that's passed, 2022, and take you through the cameras, the films, and my favorite photos. There's a bunch of different cameras that were used across the year, uh, the Canon R5, there's some iPhone photography, there's the Leica M6, the Leica M10, the Olympus OM10, there's lots of different film stocks, so my favorite Ilford HP5 Plus 400, there's some Kodak Gold 200, some Fuji Color 200, some Fuji Superior Extra, 400. Uh, anyway, there are lots of different film stocks. There are lots of different cameras. And while I'm pretty loyal to my two Leicas at this point for the second half of the year, you can see that I'm a little bit agnostic. It's really just about what do I have with me or what have I taken with me so that I can make those street photographs, or those travel photographs, um, you know, here in New York City and other places and capture those memories of the, the places I am, the things that I'm seeing in a way that feels sort of exciting and authentic to, I guess, my eye. And before we jump in, it would be amazing if you would like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. The channel's starting to grow. I know this is a small channel, but I put a lot of work into these videos and hopefully you're enjoying them. I've started to put some polls in the community section and you know, I'm really focused a lot on YouTube. So if you're enjoying the content, you've seen some of the other videos that I've made, give it a like, give it a subscribe. I'll link some of the other videos as I'm going through here. Um, if I've touched on some of the sort of moments or photographs in the past, if you wanna see some of the, the bigger context around some of these photographs, but on that note, thanks for watching. It's been a great year. Looking forward to the next one. Please like and subscribe and let's jump right in. All right, so I've rearranged the desk setup a little bit here so I can try and look at the camera and look at the photos. So I know this is a slightly different POV than what we've had so far in the channel, but let's, uh, let's try it out. Also, this is probably the last video that we'll be seeing the Christmas tree until next year. So say goodbye to the Christmas tree. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so this first photo was made in January of 2022. This was taken with the Canon R5 and a 35 millimeter lens. Uh, what I really like about this photo is the sense of energy that this woman is bringing to the frame. I also really like the balance of the lights and the darks in the frame. There's something that I really appreciate in this photo in that the black of the boots at the bottom of the frame is balanced out by the darkness of the glass of that hotel in the background. And and that the white sort of coat that this woman is wearing as she sort of skips across the street towards the winter sun is the only thing that sort of connects these two halves of the image. Um, I really like the sense of energy. I like the composition. I like the sense of balance. This works really great to me as a black and white photo. And I was really, really excited to have been there to sort of catch this moment of street photography in New York City when it happened. 
The second photo was made in February and was actually taken really close to where I live um, on the Upper West Side. This photo was actually made with my iPhone and the Halide app or Halide, I never know how to pronounce it, I think it's Halide. Um, this photo was made with an iPhone 11 Pro, the back camera, using the Halide app and then I, of course, you know, sort of um, took the raw image from that and edited it into black and white. What I really like about this photo is just that sense of sort of early morning light. You're looking east down one of the most beautiful blocks on the Upper West Side here in New York. You see sort of this figure casting a shadow. The light is coming through the, the tree which has no leaves on it because it's winter. There's a little bit of a sun flare. I just really like the sense of place that this particular photo brings and because I live in that neighborhood I also just you know really have a personal attachment to it because um, it is such a such a part of my daily life now this photo was also made in February and was made with my iPhone 11 Pro I have an, an iPhone 14 Pro now but um, I had an 11 Pro for a while and I actually made a video about this um, earlier in the year uh, but I challenged myself we were having this you know really crazy almost blizzard like snowstorm that lasted just one day it was a Sunday in February it was super cold and you know everybody kind of hunkered down but I took it as a personal challenge to go out and try and just make as many sort of snowstorm photos as I could using only the iPhone. And this is one of my favorites. I love that the height of these enormous buildings on 57th Street uh, here in Manhattan, or they call it Billionaire's Row, um, you know, overlooking the park, just are towering over the snowstorm. And yet you can still see the snow in the air. You can see it on the trees. And the, the buildings themselves are so tall that they disappear into the clouds. I love the sense of mood and the sense of snow that this particular frame has. And even though I shot this on the iPhone, I think that it's a really strong photograph and I, I think it was probably my favorite of that particular day when I was sort of out on that quest. So you can see that whole video at the, at the link that I'll include above uh, and I'll also include it in the description. Now this third photo was made also in February, but this was again made with the Canon R5 on a 35 millimeter lens. I really liked that 35 millimeter lens on the Canon R5 for just sort of everyday street photography here in New York City. Um, it was a pretty small kit. I felt like even though the 35 millimeter that I was using was not the L grade or the professional level lens, it was a really capable lens, especially for something like street photography. You know, it could shoot really wide open, f1.8, it had macro capabilities. I actually used it for a lot of my film scanning later in the year. But what I love about this photo is it's just so New York, but in not an obvious way. The Empire State Building is my favorite skyscraper in the city, probably in the whole world actually. It's beautiful and I am always looking for it anywhere I am in the city. And I've lived here for a long time and I still find it inspiring every time I see it. And what I like about this photo is I was actually photographing the building in the reflection of a storefront across the street. So I was actually looking away from the building and catching its double reflection in the two pages of glass and that's what I really like about this photo is it's a photo of an iconic piece of the New York City skyline but in a slightly less obvious way. Now, this photo was also made in February. It was also made on the Canon R5 with that same 35 millimeter lens and this was made in Times Square. As somebody who lives in New York City, you don't go to Times Square very often. It's super chaotic, it's super crowded, it's mostly tourists, and if you're trying to get somewhere fast, it is not the place to be on the sidewalk. However, sometimes it's a great place to go and try and capture some really great New York City street photography. And this particular frame that I took in late February was one of my favorites that I made all year. The American flag illuminated on the sort of digital display of the, I think it's the US Army recruiting station, you know, with the shapes of the these three people and I've mentioned in in prior videos that I'm often looking for sort of um, pairs or or groups of three to geometrically balance a photo I sort of think of it as my rule of three um, and this photo really does a nice job of eliminating that you've got sort of these um, sort of differentials in height where the further from the left to the right you go, the, the larger the uh, it, the silhouettes of the people are within the frame. I also think that, you know, in black and white, it really sort of simplifies this and makes it a little bit more timeless, although you can see that the, the guy in the middle of the frame is wearing a mask, so it's not so timeless, but um, there's just something about the balance of the frame that I really like here, and it is very, very New York City. Now, this photo was actually making on that <clears throat> now this photo was actually made on the same night, just a few blocks from that Times Square photo. So this is um, an old 
uh, bar that is on 8th Avenue in Midtown Manhattan. You can see here it's on 44th Street. It's got a really cool mid-century um, sort of neon display in front of it. And what I really like about this photo is, again, the sense of geometry. There's kind of that rule of three in place. So the woman in the mask sort of in the foreground who's blurry, and then the two guys who are kind of shoulder to shoulder uh, walking next to each other. That to me creates sort of that rule of three that I'm often looking for in terms of composition. But what I really like about this is the neon lights of the Smith's Bar sign in the background that's counterbalancing the brightness um, there with the darkness of the figures who are occupying sort of the foreground and the bottom of the frames. This next image, however, was made in April just as the weather was finally starting to warm up. We have really beautiful cherry blossoms in Roosevelt Island, and one of the ways to get to Roosevelt Island, which is an island between you know Queens and Manhattan in the East River, is you can take this gondola, which runs parallel to the Queens Queensboro Bridge. And in this image you can see the uh, Queensboro Bridge in the background, or whatever it's called these days. I think it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's something else. But forever it's the, the Queensboro Bridge. You can see that in the background, sort of between the heads of these two women. You can see the cables of the gondola that I was in looking back at Manhattan when I made this photo. And again, you can see here, and I, I'm sensing a theme as I'm looking at these photos, that rule of three that I'm looking for. So again, you've got sort of three heads or three figures here, creating sort of that geometry that I tend to look at. They're all at different sizes. They're at different places within the frame. So you've got the woman in the front, the woman in the middle, and then I think the guy on the right-hand side. But all of the, them are are just really used as a compositional element to frame what's happening in the background, which is the bridge, the river, and the cables of the gondola itself headed to Roosevelt Island. All right, this photo was made on the Canon R5 with the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. This lens is amazing. It is beautiful glass, but I, for the life of me, cannot imagine why I had that on my camera to walk around that particular day but I did, I don't know. I love this image. This image is so beautiful. I could not have art directed this better if I tried. I was walking in Central Park, it was late in the afternoon, getting close to sunset, there was a break in the trees, and you can see how the light just spilled through the trees and created this, this pool of beautiful sunlight that literally was just falling on this old man sitting on a bench reading. The image to me is really striking. If I zoom in, you can also see sort of the, the heat of summer manifested in the bugs that are in the light. It's just such an image to me, and I feel really lucky to have managed to walk by this and get such a really cinematic, gorgeous moment that I, I mean, literally, I, I, I could not have, I mean, literally, I, I could not have planned that shot any better. So the next couple of images were made in Coney Island. I actually made a video about this earlier this year, so I will put a link to it up here, wherever it goes. I think it's this side. Um, I'll also put it in the description if you want to see it, which sort of is, is the full walkthrough of getting to Coney Island, being on Coney Island, lots of other photos. Uh, so if you're interested in Coney Island street photography, uh, that is a video that maybe you would like. So this particular photo, I love, um, for a couple of reasons, I love the color. This was shot on the Olympus OM-10, like all of the photos from that particular day. It was shot on a 50 millimeter lens, and it was all in Kodak Gold 200 film. What I love about this is the composition and the colors and the sort of moment in time that it captures. There's clearly sort of a, a girl's day out. These girls are having a great time with each other. They just happen to be walking by. I love that the sort of construction, the, the industrial element of the Wonder Wheel, which is the Ferris Wheel in Coney Island, um, behind them really just like looms over everything and it's got such cool colors to sort of frame the neutrals that they happen to be wearing. You know, they're in white and sort of cream and orange and in the background you've got, you know, sort of like red and orange and blue and green and, you know, sort of this complicated tangle of, of iron compared to the softness of sort of the clothes and their hair blowing in the wind. So I just love that this is such a, a, a photo of content and that also I, I shot this from the hip. I saw them coming and I didn't have time to sort of get it up closer to my eye. And I actually really like that what's in focus here is the Ferris wheel rather than them because it gives them a bit of an almost ethereal quality where they're there but the the image is really about how the Ferris wheel kind of towers over everything that's happening on Coney Island. 
This image I really love because it's so different than most of the images that I, that I tend to make. What I love about this one is that it's so whimsical and playful. Basically what you're seeing is on the top of the building there are these like inflatable like tentacles from like an octopus or a squid um, that are basically advertisements for the sequarium that is, um, you know, on Coney Island. And I loved that they seemed to be from this particular angle and I was basically like laying on the boardwalk shooting upside down to try and get it to be framed like this. But it, it it's shot in a way that makes it look like they're almost reaching for the sun, which I thought was, you know, so kind of interesting because obviously, you know, an octopus or a squid would not be reaching for the sun. They live in the ocean. Um, so I don't know. I just, I love the whimsy of this. I love the colors. I love the tone. I love the texture of the film. Uh, I just think it's a really, a really fun image and also so it stands out because it's so different than most of the other things that I, I tend to make photos of. This photo I think is great because it's such a moment between these two people. I like that it's a little bit sort of off kilter. It's got a bit of a Dutch angle going on here. And actually what was happening was I was walking behind this couple and they were sharing like a like a popsicle um, between the two of them. So it was almost this like like erotic moment between the two of them, but from behind it just looked like they were having this sort of nice walk at the end of the day on Coney Island. I just like the vibe of this. It feels, you know, very much like a place that, you know, people would go on a date on, you know, a hot summer day. People go to Coney Island, they hang out, they go to the beach, they walk on the boardwalk. And so I just, I like that the the colors and the texture and the heat of the day are really captured on this film in a, in a really nice way. Now this is probably the most typical of me, of all of the four images that I'm sharing here from Coney Island, which were all made at the end of June. So, you know, again, this was made on the Olympus OM-10, you know, 35 millimeter film camera. It was shot with a 50 millimeter lens. This is Kodak Gold 200. And what I really love about this is it's just such a, a sweet moment with this little girl who's just, you know, playing on the beach, in the water, under this sprinkler, and you've got a really nice sense of balance. So you've got sort of her silhouette uh, balanced with the palm tree, which is really a fountain, as well as the the tall sort of figures in the background of like the the roller coasters and other things. So there's this like sort of set of three again, almost that like rule of three that I'm that I'm always apparently looking for apparently. Um, but what I like about this is it's just very summer. It's very sweet. The beach was kind of emptying out because the, the day was almost over. The sun was starting to go down. She's just lined up really perfectly. You know, she was just playing in the in the water. And I just I think that the moment here is just, you know, really kind of this this sweet um, only on Coney Island sort of image. And I love the way that Kodak Gold really captured these colors and made it feel, you know, so warm and so rich and so textured. And that the speed of the frame that I shot and, and the Olympus OM-10 only goes up to one one thousandth of a second for a shutter speed. Um, but you really get this sense of texture from all of the water droplets that are frozen um, in the air. So there's just like a very kind of magical uh, quality to this because of the way that the, the sun is coming through through those the the water and creating the silhouette of her playing with this sort of you know bucket and pail. Now this is a photo that I made of my friend Christopher who happened to be visiting New York City for like a long weekend towards the end of June. And this was actually shot on color film. So it was made with the Olympus OM-10 with that same 50 millimeter lens that I used on Coney Island. Uh, but the film stock on this was Fuji Superior Extra 400, which is a color negative film. I actually converted this to black and white because I felt like it created more of a sense of, um, thoughtfulness and it was a little bit more pensive. What I what I like about this photo so much is that when I am making portraits of people and you know professionally the the photography that I get paid to make is usually like behind the scenes and on-set photography and social media work that goes around really large fashion campaigns. And what I am typically hired to do is to capture the moments between the moments. So that is what I feel like I have here. And the reason why I like doing that type of work so much, both with you know my individual subjects as well as on those you know sort of big commercial jobs, is that there's a real sense of um, individual personality in those moments where people's eyes might be closed in thought or they're preparing for something else. They're not whatever character it is they want to be playing in front of the camera, and instead they're just themselves. I, I love that there's this sort of like moment of 
basking in the sun, the eyes are closed, I don't even remember what he was thinking about, it was between some other photos that we made, but I just really like the sort of solitude and quiet thoughtfulness that he brought to this particular frame, and that it's a sort of a moment that is kind of frozen in time and black and white, so it feels like it could have been made, you know, at any time. Now we're kind of rounding out June here, and the next two frames were both um, also made on that same day, actually, as the photo of my friend Christopher, uh, but they're both of the Empire State Building, and they were both made from the East River Ferry, uh, which is a ferry that runs you know, back and forth between Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Uh, it's awesome if you're here in the summer. It's a great way to kind of get around. You get great views of the city. You can be on top of the ferry. Um, this particular image here, um, I'm always looking for interesting ways to frame the Empire State Building. Obviously, it's a really, you know, sort of um, typical shot that people make when they come and visit. Everybody wants to see the Empire State Building. It's beautiful, it's iconic, it's enormous. But I'm always looking for ways to frame it more interestingly. And this is actually right as the uh, ferry was pulling out from the East River to head towards, I think I was going to Brooklyn um, just for the day. It was a super hot day and the Empire State Building was lined up just perfectly between the two sides of this building that you can see here. And this was just a moment that I was planning for when I got onto the ferry. I could see that it was probably going to happen. I love that you get a little bit of a sun flare, that you can feel the heat of the day. This particular day was super, super hot. It was like 100 degrees, super humid, not a cloud in the sky. It was just like one of those hot, hot, late June summer days in New York, and I feel like this photo really captures that sort of New York City vibe. Similarly, you can see here the second photo um, really leans into that rule of three that I'm often talking about. From a compositional standpoint, you've got the two guys sort of heads looking back towards Manhattan and the Empire State Building framed right in the middle. And what again I like about this is it was taken from the top of that ferry and it's it's the building but framed in a way that is again like not just a photo of the building itself. There's something else happening here. You can see people, they're looking at it, they're looking at the skyline. And again, you get a little bit of that lens flare up on the top left hand side where there's some artifacts and you know the old glass that I was using on this particular image. And so again, you get that sense of heat, you get that sense of texture, the humidity in the air, all captured so beautifully on the Fuji film that I was using that particular day. Okay, so we're halfway through the year and this would probably be a great place for me to say, if you are liking these photos, you're liking this video, you like my face, whatever the case, if you could please give the video a like, it would be awesome if you would subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel grow, it really helps the video be seen to other people. I'd love to have you join the community that I'm trying to build around this channel. It's starting to grow, it's really exciting for me. I hope you enjoy the content, so please like, please subscribe, and with that, let's jump into the second half of the year. Okay, first up are a couple of images that I made in Cartagena, Colombia. I made actually a video about this earlier this year, so I'll put a link to it here and, and in the description. It's a longer video about you know traveling down there, all the different photos that I made, sort of using film versus digital, etc. This particular photo was made with the Olympus OM-10 with Fuji Superior Extra 400 film. Um, what I love about this photo is it was like an overcast late afternoon. It was almost like getting towards sunset. But despite that, there's such vibrance to the color captured on this film. You can see the pink of these like bougainvillea and the red of the sort of color of the walls compared with sort of the, the white of the sort of windows down on the bottom and the framing of this whole thing. It's not the most interesting photograph, but what I love about it is the vibrance of the colors captured on that film. It feels so Cartagena to me, so Caribbean. It's just, for me, all about the colors in this photo. Even though it's not the most interesting, I find it beautiful. Now this photo I love for a couple of different reasons. This was made with a 28 millimeter lens on that Olympus OM-10, also with Fuji Color 200 film. So what I love about this photo is you can see the thickness of the heat in July in this photo. The film captures that haze, that humidity, that heat. You can see that everybody in this photograph, except for like one person on the right hand side, 
Everybody else is in the shade. You can see that the buildings are super like washed out. You can see the sort of strength of the sun on the left hand side. It's just a, an image that to me feels like summer in the Caribbean. And I love that this image captured that vibe so clearly. It makes me sweat even looking at this photo. It was so hot. Now this image is probably my favorite image that I made on this entire trip. And the reason for that is the colors and the light on this photograph are gorgeous. This was shot with a 50 millimeter lens on a Fujicolor 200 with that same Olympus OM-10. Um, but this particular photo was also in Colombia near Cartagena at a place called Blue Apple Beach. Uh, basically, if you go to Cartagena, um, it's really recommended and, and I personally highly recommend getting out of Cartagena itself and going to one of these beaches for a day or two. Um, it's really inexpensive and it's a really beautiful way to um, enjoy the beaches and sort of get away from sort of the, the bustle of the cities themselves. Now these next two images were made back in New York City. It's still July. Um, these were both made on the Staten Island Ferry. Uh, the Staten Island Ferry is a really great free way to see the Statue of Liberty. It's a really fun way to try and make some photos as well. Basically, you can take this free ferry, which is part of basically the commuter system here in the city from Lower Manhattan to Staten Island and back. It takes about an hour. It's like 30 minutes each way. It's totally free. And in the summer, it's really nice because they have the doors open and they have these sort of um, gangplanks around the outside where you can kind of stand and enjoy the sun and get these beautiful views of the Statue of Liberty and Lower Manhattan and Staten Island if you're into that kind of thing. Um, this photo I love because of a couple of things. First, I love the quality of light and the color. This was made on that Olympus OM-10 camera again. This was made with a 28 millimeter lens um, and using Fujicolor 200 film. What I love about this is obviously we've got the lady um, in the background, so Statue of Liberty kind of hanging out there, keeping watch over New York Harbor. You've got these people all kind of enjoying the, the view and the sun, but I love that there's this one guy who happened to look back at me and was kind of watching me try and make this photo and, and frame it up you know, really nicely. It's not perfectly framed. It would have been better if I stepped a little bit further to the right so it was all like perfectly centered, but these moments, they pass so fast sometimes, and sometimes you just gotta go with what you've got, and that's what I got here, and particularly when you're working with film, you work a little slower, so that's what I got. But I actually love the balance of this photo. You've got sort of these two doors that are, you know, kind of halfway open with portals through them. You've got sort of this frame within a frame within a frame happening with sort of the orange outside of of the ferry itself, then framing the Statue of Liberty, and then this one guy who's wearing this red shirt that almost matches the color of the ferry. It's just a great photo. It feels very obviously New York City because it's got the Statue of Liberty, um, but I just really like the, the vibe of this, and it was a, a fun afternoon. I went with a friend to just kind of ride there and back for something to do. I think it was like a, a Saturday and I didn't really have anything planned. Now. This is taken on that same ferry ride, but this is as we were turning back around to go back towards Manhattan. So what I love about this is you've got, you know, sort of the skyline of Lower Manhattan in the background. You can see the World Trade Center and all of the other buildings of Lower Manhattan. And you've got this, you know, sort of woman here with her iPhone taking a photo. But what I love about this is New York Harbor is a working harbor. It's busy. There are ports all over the place, ports in New Jersey, ports in New York, you know, there are huge container ships that come in and out of the harbor every day and cruise ships and, you know, all kinds of boats. And so I love that you've got like just the tail end of this enormous tanker that's kind of crossing the field of view and just getting ready to leave the harbor. So we're going back and yet this other boat is leaving. I just think that sort of the, the shape of this sort of negative space that you get with the water between, you know, where we were, the boat, and then Lower Manhattan creates a really interesting uh, sense of composition and again because it's you know on film it's got this beautiful kind of summer texture and you can kind of feel the the heat of the day and see the warmth of the light on the skin of all the people kind of hanging off the side of the boat looking at the view in lower Manhattan. Now these next two photos I talk a little bit more in detail about in a recent video. Again, I'll, I'll link it here and I'll include it in the description. Um, these were made on the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, they were made with Ilford HP5 plus 400 film. These were made on Leica M6. Um, what I love about this particular photo is it's sort of this Dutch angle. It's a little bit off kilter. I love that the guy is sort of balancing out the, the dark color of his shirt with sort of the, the verticality of the buildings in the background. I just love, you know, 
that it's got this sort of sense of late afternoon sun, the way that the, the rays of sun are filtering through the ironwork of the walkway here on the top of the Brooklyn Bridge that you can see the bridge itself. It's just a very, um, I think, great street photography moment or New York City street photography moment because, you know, it's this guy kind of going about his, his business, but in such an iconic New York City location that to me this felt like a, you know, a kind of a, a special moment and I, I was really happy to have my, you know, Leica M6 with me on that particular day because I can work with that, you know, pretty, pretty fast. The rangefinder was really powerful for something like this. I had a 28 millimeter lens on this and, you know, the, the shot is great. I also talked about this photo in that same video. Um, what I love about this is even though it's underexposed and I lose detail in sort of the shadows, particularly on the guy's shirt in the right, what I love about this is there is again that sort of like rule of three that I'm often looking for compositionally. So, you know, we've got sort of three round objects here at different heights and distances from the camera. In this particular case, it's the sun on the left hand side, the guy in the hat, and then his son on the right hand side. I I like the vibe that we're getting here. I love the busyness of the cables holding up the bridge. I love the skyline in the background, and I love the, the quality of the way that that 28 millimeter lens and that film through the Leica M6 are all kind of capturing the light itself from the sun just as it's about to peak below the skyline of Lower Manhattan in the background. I, I love this photo. I wish I had exposed it a little bit better, but I'm still including it here because I think that compositionally it's a really strong photo from the year and it's one that I keep going back to. Now this photo I really like um, for a couple of reasons and I actually used it as the thumbnail art for um, the video that I made earlier this year about the reintroduction of the new Leica M6. I'll link that above if you want to see it. It's you know, sort of the, the video that I have made that has gotten the most number of views. It's kind of wild. It's got like 21,000 views as of the time that I'm filming this, which is way more than any of my other videos get. So it's been really kind of cool to see this photo go in front of so many people. But what I really like about this photo um, is that, you know, first of all, it was taken on the New York City subway. I love the way that the light from this guy's phone is illuminating his face and that we've got these leading lines of the sort of um, lights on the ceiling of the subway car receding into the distance that all kind of converge basically to frame his head and draw your eye directly towards his face. This photo was made in September uh, in Chinatown here in New York City. Uh, it was made on T-Max with my Leica M6. And what I love about this is that you can see that this woman is kind of laughing. Her boyfriend is actually off frame to the left-hand side. They were just getting ready to cross the street. It was like a late sort of afternoon. It was pretty hot. You can kind of see the, the haze and the texture and the light kind of curling around that scaffolding on the left hand side but what I really like about this compositionally is that the arch of her sort of head to her back really mirrors kind of the roundness of the shadow that's coming off of the scaffolding itself so it really just creates kind of this nestled view of her built into the frame with kind of lower Manhattan in the background I love the sense of contrast that this particular film stock um, lent to this image I love how it was exposed and I love how quintessentially New York City this is. You don't, you can't take photos like this in, in other places. So I was really happy with this, this particular moment. Okay, we're still in September. This photo was made underneath the Williamsburg Bridge looking towards Manhattan. What I love about this photo, which was made on T-Max with the Leica M6 with a 28 millimeter lens, is that you can see sort of the, the late afternoon light slicing right underneath the bridge. You can see the shadow versus the light. And if you zoom in, I love that you can again kind of see the, the texture of that summer heat and that summer light, kind of that haze and how film captures that so beautifully. If you look closely, you can see the World Trade Center in the background and all that kind of stuff. But what I really like about this photo is just that it's um, this sense of contrast between shadow and light and that it's all done using sort of this bridge in its natural environment. This photo was made on the same afternoon as the 
previous one, obviously you can see the Williamsburg Bridge there in the background. You can see the really bright sun kind of shining at me. Um, again, this is made on the Leica M6 with a 28 millimeter lens. This is made with Kodak TMAX 400 film. And there's this fountain, you know, in a little bit of, in a little park called Domino Park, kind of on the East River overlooking Manhattan. And what's really awesome about it is that, you know, on a hot summer day, kids kind of go and play in it. So similar to that photo in Coney Island, where I was getting the silhouette of that child kind of you know playing in the water and enjoying summer that's really what I got here compositionally it's not perfect but I still like the vibe that it brings you've got sort of the deep shadows almost like full blacks of the bridge in the background and I've I noticed when I was shooting with T-Max that that's something that you know it really does is it renders really really deep blacks so you've got to be careful when you're exposing that film if you're looking for shadow detail but what I love here is actually that heightened sense of contrast where you don't get a lot of detail in the in the shadows and so it creates this really kind of interesting, you know, um, euphoric, happy summer feeling of this kid who was, you know, playing in this fountain trying to stay cool on a really hot summer day. You can see the sun kind of blaring down and, you know, that he's kind of escaping it just by hanging out in this fountain. So this next photo was taken in uh, October, late October here in New York City. You can see people are wearing jackets now. Um, I love the softness of this image. It's totally in focus. Uh, this was made with the Leica M6 with a uh, 28 millimeter lens on Ilford HP 5 plus 400 film. Um, you can see that there is a lot of that beautiful, almost like halation around the lights here at Grand Central Terminal. You can see the Chrysler building in the background. You can see this guy kind of in his jacket and some other commuters leaving Grand Central Terminal. The thing that I love the most about this image is that the people in it are determined to sort of move forward with their day. They're kind of moving in the same direction as that uh, statue of the eagle that's placed right at the middle of the frame between the the buildings sort of you know in the sky with the Chrysler building in the background and I just love the softness of the light in this image it was early morning um, I don't know it was probably like eight o'clock or seven o'clock, I can't even remember. Um, it was like just after sunrise and um, you can see that the light is still really low and it's illuminating the buildings in the background kind of from below as opposed to above like most of the time of the year. And so I just love the, the shape of the light and the softness of the light and the softness of the image and the way that HP5 captured all of that in this particular uh, frame. Now, what I really like about this photo, even though it's blurry, is the quality of light. So similar to the image that I just uh, talked about at Grand Central Terminal, this was also made on the Leica M6 with Ilford HP5 plus 400 film with a 28 millimeter lens. This was made also right around sunrise. This was actually just before sunrise one morning. I was walking with a friend of mine. We were headed out to you know make some photos and he got a much better image of this same scene. But what I like about this image is again, the soft softness of the light itself. You can see that glow around the fluorescent lights of this like fruit stand on the sidewalk. And I just love the way that the film itself kind of captured this mood early in the morning of people picking up some like fruits and vegetables and, and the light of this particular fruit stand. No, the image is not in focus. No, it's not straight. It's got like a totally sideways angle. Um, but I still, for whatever reason, am just drawn to this image because it feels feels kind of chaotic in the way that living in New York is often very chaotic. But again, the thing that I really like about this uh, photograph is the quality of the light itself and the shape of the light in particular around those fluorescent lights. People who shoot a lot on Cinestill get this same effect but in color. I don't know what the um, chemical reasons are for this on Ilford HP5 uh, plus 400, but I love what happened in this image. Now this next image is going back to the Canon R5. I actually made a video about a series of photographs made um, on this particular morning. This was an experiment using the Pro Mist filters. Um, they're super popular with digital shooters these days. I mean, you can use them on film cameras too as well, but most people tend to use them on digital cameras. They soften the light, they create a little bit of a glow, um, they decrease the clarity a little bit and take kind of that digital edge off. I'll, I'll link the video here and I'll put it in the description if you wanna sort of see what the impact of different 
different um, sort of strength promised filters are on a digital image. What I love about this image made in Central Park, you know, again, early in the morning is the composition and the light of this one. There's a runner on his own sort of running through this tunnel, literally like running toward the light as the light of the day starts. And because this was shot on the Promis filter on the Canon R5, which has amazing dynamic range, you know, it's got this really like filmic quality to it. Um, it would be probably pretty hard to expose actual film to get all of the highlight and shadow on this particular photo. So in this case, you know, digital maybe actually served me better, even though I really, really like shooting on film. Um, but you know, there's something about the composition of this. It feels very poetic. It feels very beautiful. Again, silhouettes, which I love, high contrast scenes, and that Promis filter really softened uh, the, the glow of the sun that was like kind of coming straight at me and straight at the lens and filtering through these trees because it was still so low because it was so early in the morning. Now, this photo, I completely messed up, but I still like it. Um, this was also made on Leica M6 with Ilford HV5 Plus 400. This was, again, made with the 28 millimeter lens. It's kind of my go-to, especially when I'm shooting film. Um, I love the, the field of view that I get with 28 millimeters. Um, this was shot in Bushwick near a friend's um, place in Brooklyn, and I was really trying to do something with the flags and the birds, but I didn't think I had the composition right, and you can see that the the film itself, like, I, I don't know what happened with like the development here and you know the scanning, you can see that the, the edges are super white because they were reflecting light. I don't know, there's a lot wrong with this photo. And yet, and yet, I like this photo quite a bit. I think there's something kind of poetic about it. There's something beautiful about the fact that it is in black and white, that it's the American flag and the POW flag and sort of this big um, sky with these sort of birds, this flock, and they were actually flying in a circle. And, you know, I was trying to get them in a way that I thought would be interesting. I didn't think I got it. And then when I actually had this developed um, and scanned and it came back, I was like, oh, actually that's, uh, yeah, I, I like that. Okay, so the next three images uh, were kind of a mistake. I mean, it was an intentional mistake, but the mistake that I made went with the intention, but I just made an extra mistake. Basically, these were made with the like M6, the 28 millimeter lens uh, on Ilford HP5 plus 400, but I was pushing this film. I wanted to really test um, in the, the high contrast, but very, very dark streets at night of Midtown Manhattan. I wanted to see how far I could really push the film um, in this case. And so what I thought I was doing was pushing the film to 1600. So it's a 400 speed film. I thought I was pushing it to 1600, but actually I exposed it for 3200 by accident. So an, a full extra stop than I thought I was pushing the film. But what it ended up doing is giving me these really gritty, high contrast, like very quintessential New York City photography, street photography vibes. So this first one, you can see the amazing glow around the, the lights of this food cart. You can see that the background, the, the street that this was on, this was in like the 50s around like 6th Avenue, is like totally blacked out, but there's this really bright sense of high contrast as these people walk by the food truck. And you can see here that the, the shutter was actually relatively fast. So I had the lens, you know, pretty open. I think I was probably shooting like F2, maybe F2.8 at the most. Again, to 3200, all I thought, I thought I was exposing for 1600, so happy accident. Um, but this is like such a vibe. This is, this is, you know, a New York City vibe on film, like, like hardcore. And I was really surprised and happy with the results. Um, this second photo, I did not get the exposure right, partially because I thought I was exposing for 1600 and it was 3200, but yet I really like this photo. And the reason that I like this photo, and you can see it, you know, post scan after it's been developed, I've, I've kind of lifted it a little bit. I've tried to pull a little bit more detail out of that shadow. So it's a little extra grainy. Um, but what I really like about this is you've got the, you know, the, the marquee of Radio City Music Hall in the background. You've got the tree because we were moving into the holiday season. This was shot in the middle of November. Um, but what what I love is the light coming onto these people's face. They're crossing 6th Avenue, they're laughing, they're having a good time. You can just like get a really merry, happy vibe. It's very, very, I would say moody, but yet the mood is happy despite the fact that the image itself is so dark and full of high contrast. So pretty cool image. I wish I had exposed it a little bit better, but I still managed to kind of save it. 
Okay, so this is the last image of this set. It was made in mid-November on the Leica M6 with uh, Ilford HP5 you know, plus 400 film, 28 millimeter lens. Um, again, I thought that I was exposing this for 1600. I was actually pushing it to 32, but it, it turned out really well. When I posted this on Instagram, when I've shared this with some of my friends, this is the image that people seem to really like of this set. Um, it's very New York, it's very quintessential, it's very moody, it feels very cinematic. What I love about this is the high contrast. You get this guy kind of like walking through the steam vent, um, and I'll, I'll come back to steam vents, but I talk a lot about them on this channel. They're, they're my go-to, I love them. Um, and they're so New York, I mean, that's how we heat the city here. Um, but what I love about this image is the sense of mystery. You've got, you know, this guy who you can not even make out his full sort of silhouette. You've got the steam heat, you've got the food truck in the background, you've got the really dark periphery of the images. It's just like, it's a, it's a vibe. This is a vibe. And I'm glad that people liked it on social media. Okay, and to round out November, one last shot of birds. I love bird shots. I know that I'm not the only one who's always like trying to get like that that bird shot that's just like, uh, this is probably not it, although it's close. Um, I was walking around with a friend of mine one morning. This was made with the Leica M6. This is Portra 800, 28 millimeter lens. Uh, no, 50 millimeter lens. And this was like, the birds were coming and they came out of nowhere and I literally was just like, camera up, like go. And I didn't know what my exposure was at. I don't, I, I had no idea what the camera settings were at, but I was like, I'm looking right into the sun, which I love. There's gonna be contrast. Let's see what we can get. There's some flaring here, which I tend to really like. I know some people don't like that. Um, and this image, when I had it, you know, developed and then scanned back, I thought like, what a, what a beautiful, what a beautiful image. Look at those colors, look at the shapes, look at the, you know, sort of the star lines coming off the sun. I was really, really happy with how this came out. So this was um, one of the last photos I made in November. It was right before I traveled for Thanksgiving to see some family, and I was really happy with how it came out when I got this roll back. Now the next couple of photos that I'm gonna share here have been covered in recent vlogs. I did like two weeks of daily vlogs. I was kind of interested to see like what that would, you know, sort of give me creatively if I could get the energy, if you liked those watching the channel. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna pick those back up. It is a lot of work. It was fun to do. I know it was only two weeks, but kind of going into the holidays, I know it was probably like ill-timed on my side. But a couple of the images from some of those recent videos, and I'll, again, I'll link them you know, here if you want to see them, um, are still some sort of standouts of, of each of these months. So this image here um, of this woman dancing to this like guy playing drums, like it was a total vibe in Washington Square Park, which is a classic for, you know, New York City street photography. Um, a lot of other YouTubers, a lot of, you know, street photographers on Instagram, and just generally in life, like, I mean, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a place that People have been photographing for decades. It's really kind of a classic of New York photography. I just love the the energy in this. This woman, you know, very striking in the hat with the coat, dancing with the arch in the background, and how the the buildings kind of fade into the highlights of the sky. This was right, you know, right around sunset. Um, yeah, it was great. This was made with the Leica M10R, which is you know really kind of like my go-to everyday carry camera these days. Um, I pretty much shoot that always with the 28 millimeter lens, which is what this had on it. Um, yeah, I, I love this, this photo. Now this photo is one of my favorites probably of the whole year, similar to some photos I made around this time last year using sort of the steam heat of the city. Um, this was made at sunset as opposed to sort of sunrise, which is where I typically get a lot of these types of images. What I loved about this is it was made on Fifth Avenue in Chelsea, and it looks like this guy is walking on clouds, but he happened to just basically walk over a steam vent that was on the curb that you can see him just walking in. And I just, the, the, the illumination from the cars that you can see behind him coming through the lights, their headlights, um, really created this sense of like, this guy basically like walking on a cloud. I just, I love that he's framed between, you know, sort of these two sets of buildings going down the block, that he's walking on the steam. I just thought like this image, this, this is a keeper for me. This is very quintessential me and what I am looking for when I'm out trying to make photos that feel just like, you know, New York. Okay, so these next couple of images I also have shared about in one of the recent vlogs. And again, I'll, I'll link that above and I'll put a link in the description below. Um, this was all about 
uh, using rainy days in New York to create some really striking photography. So in this particular image, um, it was shot right around Grand Central Station. There was a huge steam vent at ground level that was really just like filling this one particular street corner with steam and it was raining. Enough that people needed their umbrellas, but not enough that I couldn't be out in it. I made this with the Leica M10R with the 50 millimeter lens. Um, and I just love, again, kind of going back to that rule of three, I've got these three umbrellas. They're all in a different relationship to the lens. There's a sense of high contrast. You know, I, I made this in black and white because I mostly shoot my street photography in black and white when it's on film or, you know, digitally. I just, I love the vibe of this, of this particular frame and that you've got sort of the steam as the focal point in the center and that the center, uh, and that the subjects of the, the three people around it are sort of surrounding the steam and giving it additional shape. This image was my favorite image of that particular day. When I got this, I literally stopped shooting for like an hour. When I made this photo, I was like, that's it. Like, I'm not going to get a better photo on the day. And that turned out to be true. Sometimes when you make that photo, you know that it's true. This is this is me. This is New York. This is street photography to my eye. This is what I love so much. And this is the photo that I was hoping I would be able to make on this particular day. What I love about it is the contrast. There's a slight sense of motion. You can see there's a little bit of motion blur on her back foot. She's wearing this black coat against this huge cloud of white steam. You've got the American flag in the background. You've got some signage. You've got the, you know, such an obvious New York City street scene here. I, I just, I loved this photo the second I made it. And as soon as I made it, you know, like I said, I was like, that's, that's the one. And again, this was, this was the Leica M10R. This was the 50 millimeter lens. Like this is my go-to setup these days for everyday carry. I'm so happy with that camera. It was a bit of an investment, of course, like as they're not inexpensive and I already owned the M6, but the images that I'm getting out of the M10 that I'm carrying around with me pretty much every day now are really, really spectacular. All right, that was a really long video. If you've watched all of it, that is amazing. Thank you so much. I did include chapters below of the different sort of months, uh, cameras, films, et cetera, so you could kind of jump around depending on what you're here to look for. If you only wanna see the Leica stuff, then you know where to go, et cetera. Um, it's been a really great year for me as a photographer. I've had a lot happen in my personal life. I'm really excited to really be focusing on YouTube for you know 2023. I've got a lot of ideas. I'm gonna keep being out in the streets and you know making, making New York City street photography, which I, I love to do. Um, I wanted to end with one final image. I don't often share photos of myself, um, but I will share this one here. This image was made by me, obviously. I'm holding my M6. Um, this was actually portrait of uh, 800. I converted it to black and white. Um, the exposure was like kind of weird and I don't know, the developing, the colors were like kind of wonky. Um, so I made it into black and white. This was taken at MoMA um, here in New York City um, at the end of the Wolfgang Tillman's exhibition here. My mom was actually in town. We went to it together. The exhibition was amazing. And the thing that I learned at that exhibition is to just take photographs of everything. That exhibition and that artist and that photographer, he just documents his life with his camera. And that's why I am so enamored with my Leica cameras that I've really been working on in the second half of this year. You know, no, I've not been working on them forever. And yes, I still have my Canon system for, you know, some of my professional gigs and, you know, things that pop up because there's versatility in, in having lots of different options. And right now where I am, you know, I, I need both sets, but for my personal work, for my street photography, for my travel photography, for anything with my friends and my family, for me, getting on board with Leica and really falling in love with them this year has been a total game changer. So I wanted to end on this image of me at a museum, learning from another photographer, holding my M6. Uh, it has been an amazing year. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking the video if you have and subscribing if you have, and if not, please do so if you're into this and I will see you in 2023. Thanks.